Hey, how's it going? Oh. I uh, I started watching something while I was eating, and uh, I'm moving it to the tablet, the old crappy tablet, and uh, I'm kind of watching something now, so it's going to take me a minute, but it's uh, the thing I was watching, uh, I'm not sure if they renamed it or whatever, but you can find it on YouTube, and it's UFO Files. And the one I'm watching is Evidence of Alien Conspiracies Revealed Marathon. And it's like two hours and nine minutes long. And uh, there was one of these. There was one of these. And I think it's actually a show. And I don't know if it's something that was on before I started watching this stuff on the History Channel. But like the one I watched the other day and I can't... I think I talked about it in a stream, but I can't really remember which one it was. From what I remember, it was pretty good. And this one here's not too bad. Like, when it first started, it was talking about the Aurora, Texas event. And as soon as I get done, I'm, I'm watching something now where they're, they got a prosecutor and an online journalist talking about Donald Trump, and I kind of want to watch it. It's only a couple minutes long. And, well, I'm not going to, I probably won't watch the whole 14 minutes, but it's only a couple minutes long. And uh, I'll watch at least a little bit more of it, and then I can finish watching it later. And uh, but it it talked about this one, and it it was a it, it was like an alien contact thing from like 1897 in Aurora, Texas. And again, I wasn't there. You weren't there. I don't think there's anybody left alive from that period, even if they were like infants and didn't see anything. I don't, I don't think that too many people live to be like 128 years old or whatever it is. <coughs> and, uh, but it was a fairly credible sighting. Because, again, it wasn't, you know, like, you know, a couple guys out in the woods drinking beer after they cut woods. Off. And, again, I, I believe the Walton Travis story, but that one was a little easier to dismiss because it was like a handful of guys drunk as shit after working all day in the woods. It was more like the Phoenix event. It was more like Shag Harbor. There was a shitload of witnesses. Uh... And, you know, and again, it was like Roswell. They sent somebody from the Army. The guy from the Army, like, looked it over, gave an assessment. So they had him on the record. And, uh... And then what I did was I actually dropped this down. Oh, while I'm at it, I'll, uh... Yeah, I'll make sure I get all my Paragon stuff. Okay, this is 36. Movement speed. I'm still going to do movement speed because I don't know what the dexterity and stuff does. Okay, we got attack speed. Cooldown reduction. Area damage. I cannot yeah, we'll afford start. That. I want to get up to 10 on life per hit. <coughs> if I start coughing a lot, I'll just take the mic off or end the stream. Okay, I'm going to let this finish. This cannot be opened yet. The gods strike through me.
The storm breaks! That's why you want to run around and get those towers like I did, ignoring the monsters. Because uh, on this, this is one of the few ones where you're allowed to do it. As soon as you get all the, the things turned off, then you've earned your free chest. And then you just have to kill the monsters. Okay. I'm not going to watch it while I'm streaming, but there is uh, Michael Sandler's, he's got a video out, video out, Biggest Lie, David Grush, UFOs, UAPs, and Congressional Hearings. If this guy is going to, without any evidence, and I don't see how he could have any credible evidence, if he's going to come out and start accusing David Grush and other people, people that are eyewitnesses, people that have pretty good credentials, if he's going to just start smearing them, uh, I, I'm i going to fucking go off and I'll probably get lightheaded and I really don't want to be doing that when, I get, uh, when I'm streaming. And uh, one thing I will say is uh, there's some shit going on with Trump. And I don't consider this political. I really don't. Just like I don't think it's political to view that the people who seceded from the country and, you know, attacked our country so they could keep slavery illegal. And you'll have these people, oh, well, it was about states' rights. Yeah, and what was that state right that they were really concerned about? What was the one that set it off? It was the ability to own people because they were black. You know, I'm sorry. You you are just either stupid or a fucking, or, or, or a liar. If you're going to start trying to push that state's right bull. It's like these people that are going around, Oh my God, slavery was so good for the black people because they learned skills. They were building their fucking resume. And, I need spirit. Your um, are revealed. Oh, hey, quick. Uh, quick shout out. Uh, please, uh, please consider writing your, uh, your, I don't have your enough elected officials at all levels. Local, state, uh, uh, federal. And ask them to work on legalizing uh, assisted suicide. Seriously, because, you know, what happens to people when their homeless is not good? Um, what happens to people when they're when they can't feed themselves and they can't work? It's not good. I don't have enough spirit. And me, and I'm sure other... Because I, I watched, like, one parent die in hospice. And that was, I mean, and no offense to the people in hospice, they were Not great. I, I think they did the best they could. But uh, I personally would like to see if we can sit around as a nation and watch kids get murdered in mass shootings in school, watching decent people get murdered in uh, mass shootings in nightclubs and shit. And, and we're as a collectively, as a nation, not, not, not everybody's doing this, but as a nation, we're sitting around watching them die and it's okay. And I don't know if it's still going on, but I know back in the day, you had cases where you had, uh, like, children or people who, who were dying. They, uh, or at least not living very good. And because insurance companies didn't want to pay and the hospitals didn't want to pay, they'd get a court order and they'd let them die. They'd unplug them. And I'm sorry, but if we can let sick people die because, you know, corporations and hospitals are greedy motherfuckers, then I'm sorry, we can let them die if it's their choice. I need spirit. 
We, we can give them that humane option. We absolutely can. But uh, there are people, they were doing it on Morning Joe this morning, and this is the thing I don't understand. I, I literally don't. And, and these people, they, they, it's, and they're decent people. I, I honestly think they are. But they are sitting there, and they had a guy on. He, he knows something about the judicial system, and he was going, because uh, Trump took out an ad attacking the investigators of his crimes. And he was told flat out, if you try and intimidate witnesses or the jury or, you know, attack people, you know, you will lose your... F he basically said, you know, you're getting this freedom from the jail while you await trial on these conditions. And if you break any laws, if you break any of these conditions, you may lose your right to be free and go to jail. He's doing it on a daily basis. He just told a, he just told a, a, a rally... To uh, that he wasn't going to listen to the judge. And if it was anybody else, he's done more than enough that I'm pretty sure he would be locked up. He would definitely be given a gag order, and he would have probably been fined into the fucking Stone Age for his behavior. And this guy this morning on Morning Joe, and I don't think he's wrong. I'm not trying to bash him. He's just trying to be honest. And he's sitting there going... Oh, well, you know, that he's probably, if it was anybody else, yes, he'd probably be in jail awaiting trial. But, you know, because it's Trump, they're going to they're gonna do this, they're going to do that. They said the fact is, you know, if they wanted to honestly jail him, then it would suddenly become an issue because he's a president. And we can't lock up presidents because they have Secret Service protection. And I don't, I don't fucking get this. I literally do not fucking get this. Um, I, I, I don't know. I'm not a legal expert. And, you know, I think there, there may be like a very, very slim, almost microscopic and non-existent chance I'm wrong on this. But um, I, I don't know 100% sure. It's just my common sense is going off telling me, yeah, you're right on this. But I doubt it there's anything in the law regarding a president or Secret Service protection or anything else that states you can't lock up a fucking crook because he's got Secret Service protection. I don't... This, this literally doesn't make any sense. And there it was Senator Whitehouse. He was going on about Clarence Thomas. Because we've, we've literally legalized bribery. When you look at Congress, when you look at the Supreme Court, we have legalized bribery for certain people. You know, there was a Democratic Supreme Court justice. She worked at Harvard, and once she was working there, her job, what she was being paid for, part of it was going over, you know, people getting admitted to the college. So that process, legacies and everything else. Court case came before and she ended up recusing herself because of the appearance that it might look dubious. Not, not that I think rational people would think that she wasn't smart enough to distinguish her job at Harvard with her new job. as a, But she recused herself and you've got Clarence Thomas and at least one other Republican justice that are taking kickbacks. They are taking paid vacations and all this other shit. It just turned out this motorhome that uh, justice travels around in during the summer, it, it's like a quarter of a million dollars and some somebody that has court
business regularly pays for it. We've legalized bribery. And he was going on about this, you know. And I go, well, what do you expect? I go, nothing is going to likely be done about Clarence Thomas. I go, what have we seen with Trump? I go, Trump keeps breaking the law. I go, if he was anybody else, he'd be in jail now. And I go, nobody's doing a thing about it. The, you know, and, and I understand there might be reasons why the, uh, the special counsel's not doing it because he doesn't want this turning into a First Amendment issue where it could be litigated to death and all this. But we need, like, we need, like, all branches of government to fucking discover their balls, discover their, their spine. And this is the problem we got. The Democrats have just been going along with the shit for so long, we might be fucked. And I told him, I go, uh, nothing's going to likely happen to Clarence Thomas. Because I go, you guys had a chance. I go, you know, and I, I'm thinking this. I didn't say it, but they could have expanded the courts. They had the votes. They could have done it. They could have at least tried. You know, like like that, uh, oh, that one movie where that guy went on a killing spree after he watched some scumbag murder and rape his wife and daughter in front of him. He, he went on a killing spree. And uh, I think it's upright stand, uh, upright standing citizen or something like that. And he made that comment, you know, where he's like, well, if I'd have tried him, he might have he might have got away with it. I, at least I got him in jail for so long. And he goes, you know, if you'd have tried and failed, I could live with that. And and that's the thing here. It's like they could have tried. They could they could have fucking a tried and they didn't. And I go, you take a look at the shit Trump's going on. I go, they're doing this now. I go, he was told to behave. And if not, he could sit in jail until his trial. I go, he is long past that point where he should have been locked up. And I go, they are sending a message again that if you're a rich white Republican, you can fucking break the law and nothing fucking happens to you. I go, that's the message they're sending. And I go, so this shit will happen again. And I go, look at the Bush administration. We, we didn't see anybody tried for the war crimes. I go, there's a whole host of people. I go, they got to... I mean, Jesus Christ, Dick Cheney shot a guy in the face while he was drunk and hunting. And he, he waited a whole day, turned himself in. Nothing happened to him. You know, the world we live in, he got the guy he shot. He shot this fucking guy in the face, likely because he was drunk while he was out hunting. This guy fucking publicly apologized to him. I'm really sorry you shot me in the face. You know, I mean... I, I, you, you can't make this shit up. And I told him, I go, across the board, whether they're in the White House, they're appointed by the White House, they're in Congress, they're in the judicial system, I go, we have time after time after time after time where nothing happens to these people because I go, the good people that could act refuse to act. And it's a, it's a quote from uh, one of our greater presidents, John F. Kennedy, the only thing it takes for evil to triumph is for good people to do nothing. And and, and there's there's a good guy. I, I really don't know how to comment to him because he he's so much more knowledgeable than me. His name's Glenn Kushner. He's a, like a 30-year veteran federal prosecutor. He was an Army JAG for a number of years, and then he was a federal prosecutor. From a, he was actually trained at one point by uh, uh, Mueller. Uh but he's really calling for uh, there to be cor uh, tr uh, cameras in the courtroom. And I was kind of on that side. I, that, that's the way I felt about it. And uh, I read something that was written by a former, well, so is Glenn. I'm not, I'm not trying to shit on him or whatever. But it was written by a guy that was a former federal prosecutor, and he did a lot of uh, mob cases. And he said flat out that there were cases he had where he thinks he might not have gotten witnesses to testify if there'd have been cameras in there. And he said with Trump's history of intimidating witnesses and, and whatnot, he was real leery about letting the cameras in the courtroom. And that kind of gave me pause. That, that really gave... Oh, Rainbow Goblin. Okay, this is officially new to me. But uh, but he made the case that, you know, hey, you know, some of these witnesses might not want to testify if they're going to be on camera. 
if, if they're going to have to go through that bullshit. And the other thing he mentioned was, he goes, this guy that was just shot in Utah, you know, and it might have been the same day, but that guy, there, there's a guy in Utah, and uh, he... Uh, yeah, take that. Um, he was threatening people. He was threatening the president, the vice president, the... The DA in uh, the DA in New York that's got charges against Trump, and the FBI went to arrest him. Apparently, the shit he had done was enough. They, the Secret Service, did not need to question him about his threats. <laughs> they were they were ready to arrest his ass, and they showed up with an arrest warrant. So it, it was a lot like Waco, Texas, and Ruby Ridge. They showed up with the legal authority to arrest him. And he basically drew a gun on him. He was like that Finnicum guy. He drew a gun on him, and they, they fucking put him down like a rabid dog. They just they took him out for the traitorous piece of shit that he was. So he will not be prop, uh, prop, or prop, or be a problem for us anymore. And that's what this guy said. He goes, well, we just had this guy in Utah. If he gets the, the, the cameras in the courtroom, and it's on TV, and it's streaming across social media and clips and that, he goes... How many more of them are going to be created if Trump's allowed to have cameras in there? And that really gave me pause. That that and, and again, I don't know because I'm, you know, Glenn Kirshner, I don't know if he actually tried any mob cases. I think he may have. I know he did a lot of homicide cases. And he probably far better than I do understands the logistics and everything else of court. And he's probably, and, and I'm not going to, and, and, and he's right, he's probably got like, well, there's certain things they can do to prevent, to, to protect those people, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I do think the guy made a really good case for not having the cameras in there. I, I, I sincerely do. Um, but it's like, my God, I'll be honest with you, it, it's like moments like this where I really don't mind that I've got bad health because, you know, like, I'm... I, I broke my ankle. I'm one, and I'm not not going to do it on purpose, but I'm one good fall away from fucking having my neck break and, and just not having to deal. Because, I mean, this shit is just awful. I'm sorry, you know, and I'm like, you know, Donald Trump should be treated like any other fucking criminal that's awaiting trial. And I go, if he's done stuff where he should be fined, fine him. If, and he has. If he's done stuff, and they have fined him, but like you know, he he's got he put out an ad where he's attacking the investigators. Well, just find him like a half a million dollars a day, or find his campaign a half a million dollars a day until they take it the fuck down. Fucking seize their money, freeze their accounts. That will Field fuck him up more than locking him up because he won't have money to run his fucking bullshit anymore. And uh, I, I mean, I I didn't pass the bar. I didn't go to legal school. But how fucking hard is it for these people to figure this shit out? I don't understand this. You know? And I'm like, if he's done stuff where he should be gagged, gag the motherfucker. Give him a gag order. Tell him he's going to jail if he breaks it. Gag his fucking lawyers. Tell him they're going to jail if they break it. Make them responsible. Let them, hey, look, we're going to... He's your client. You need to control him or this is what's going to happen to you. They can do this shit. There, there was already talk about this the other day where they could basically let his lawyers know that, hey, from now on, anything he, uh, anything he's going to put out in public, any speeches he's going to give, whatever, you guys have to vet it or you have to tell him not to do it. And, you know, and basically you're going to hold the, you know, the lawyers responsible for it. And, uh, and I'm like, and if he's, if he's done anything, and he has... I'm like, if he's done anything where he should be locked up, then lock his fucking ass up. And I go, if the Secret Service, I go, if Secret Service are not a fucking issue, they are not a part of the judicial branch. If the ju judicial branch orders him locked up, then the fucking Secret Service doesn't have a fucking thing to say about it. You can let them know. If you want to stay with them and protect them, turn in your fucking guns and badges at the fucking door, and you can fucking go in with them. You know, and, oh, we can't go in without our gun. Bullshit. You will surrender your fucking weapons like any other federal agent when you enter the fucking jail or the prison or whatever the fuck it is. 
Well, we can, but well, you can refuse to do your job. I don't think anybody's gonna fire you for it. But those are the conditions. You either follow the fucking prisoner into his fucking confinement without your weapons, without anything. You go in there basically like anybody else would with nothing but your fucking two hands, your two feet, and your fucking brains. And or you don't go in. And if you're caught in there with anything that's contraband, well, you'll be subject to the laws that you violated, and you will probably end up with a fucking cell next to him eventually. Just let them know the way it is and expect them to fucking obey. Because what this will do, what this will do if they do it, it will tell the next son of a bitch not to do this. I don't have enough spirit. I don't know. I, that was, and I'm, it's not even really depressing, but it's just like, what the fuck is wrong with these people? Commonly called the plague tunnels were originally used to bury West March's indigent. However, when the great pestilence struck, the city decided well, anyways, the would serve just anyways, let's get well back onto that. Because, I gotta get that podcast started. I, I, I'm actually gonna watch one, but yeah, they the did day. that, You're and I can get you caught up to what I've watched already, but they, they did this thing... And apparently there was some kind of, and the way it was described, it was not that dissimilar to a TikTok. They, they basically, and the guy that was on there, he's an older guy, and I've seen him before. I don't know if he's dead or if he's just not doing this anymore. But, uh, hang on. Um, but he said back then, when people describe something going, hundred miles out because he goes airplanes didn't exist he goes when people said things were traveling hundreds of miles an hour it's like them saying they were traveling thousands of miles of now hours uh, miles an hour now and uh, what happened was this UFO flew into a windmill on a judge's property so again it wasn't dumb fuck Billy Bob it was a judge now, it was Texas, it was 1897, and you could probably think of that fucking moron, and I'm not saying you're wrong, but you could probably think of that fucking moron judge that let Kyle Rittenhouse get away with murder. You could be thinking of that, and maybe you're right, I don't know. But I still think he would know what he's looking at, even if he was a fucking stupid, corrupt judge. I still think he would maybe know, hey, look... And so this thing crashed, and the next morning, like, everybody saw what was going on. Well, they eventually had somebody from the Army, and he came in, and his opinion was, because there were bodies there, they found craft. And, uh, you know, they found the craft, they found the bodies, and... The guy from the army looked it over and he basically said that the, the person, the body they found was clearly not human and that it was a Martian. And that was probably due to literature because they're, uh, I'm trying to think of, uh, th there were some stories going on, comic books, books, whatever, and they were talking about, you know, the, the life on Mars, you know, like War of the Worlds and some of the other stuff. And I think that stuff came along later. But it was it was part of the uh, like right now the 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 language out there the story out there is the you know Roswell Grays and whatnot. Well, that's what the story was then. And uh, so, but this is like the Army intelligence officer, the ar the officer from the Army. He basically said, yeah, it's a, it's a Martian. That's who was flying this, because he he was convinced looking at it that this person was not a human being whatever it was and uh, there we go and that's about where I was now the thing I'm gonna watch now and I might have seen this already um, there was a guy uh, and I did a I can't remember all the details that I told you but I covered this This one's got life per second, so we're going to upgrade. Oh, this one's better. More damage, and it gives you more life after each kill. Give me a sec. 
Wait for a hit. Yeah, that shit. Um, that whistleblower that came forward, and, you know, again, I'm going to tell you, as I understand it, and you make up your own mind, but to me, I already wrote to uh, the one reporter that covered it, and I think I tagged some of the people in the Senate that were over the, the hearing in that, and I told them, I go, this should be viewed as witness tampering. Uh, it gr Grush is the guy's name, uh, G-R-U-S-C-H. He was, uh, he was a guy that was investigating stuff for the UAP task force, and th this just came out with between yesterday and today. Uh, I believe it's the last two days. I don't think it's older than that. And what happened was... And what happened was, uh, after like three days after he testified, and it's the, it's the intercept... Uh, the Intercept was the ones that printed the Snowden story. So, you know, I, I'm personally of the opinion that, that they're kind of shitty. They, uh, they could have taken what he told them, and they could have printed what was relevant. Like, and, and I'll be honest with you, I would be more supportive of uh, Snowden for the same reasons I'm going to give you here. He, he could have came forward and told everything he did minus a few things. And it would have been just as damaging. It would have required uh, the government to do the same thing, but it wouldn't have hurt I need us. It. Like, he could have came forward and talked about them spying on us. And if he'd have kept it to that, oh my God, I, I would have been a big fan. I would be looking for him to be pardoned and all this other shit. And, uh... But what he did was, he didn't just out what they were doing illegally to us. My strength has increased. He outed what they were doing for our security. Um, it was just in the news this past week. China has been trying to hack into uh, Japan's secret database or something. And they were saying that, you know, hey... Um, we may have to limit what we tell Japan if it comes out they can't keep it safe from China. China spied on us. We shot those balloons down as they were flying over and whatnot. So we were spying on countries, some of them allies, some of them not. And he fucking outed. Uh, he harmed our national security by doing that. He absolutely did. And for that, I don't think he deserves a pardon. If he comes back, he should get tried and he should be locked up for the rest of his life. I firmly believe that. But if he'd have just basically told the truth on what they were doing illegally to us, I could forgive him a lot of bullshit. I, I could see, like, hey, yeah, this stuff was illegal. Well, it was classified. Not if it's illegal, it isn't. If the government is spying on us and they're breaking law, that was something that came out, uh, and I can't remember who was saying it, but it was somebody basically over this uh, UFO uh, hearings that they had last month. And the guy said, he goes, well, you know, they're trying to say, well, they don't have the security clearance to say it. And he's like, look, he goes, those security laws are contingent on the security being for legal things. He goes, we know for a fact, we know for a fact that those are illegal programs because they're not reporting lawfully to Congress. And, you know, hey, if that's true, they should challenge that. They should look into that. And if it's true... They should listen to that guy and be like, yeah, all this stuff is not, you, you can't classify it. It's all illegal. You, know, you guys are going into court lying. You guys are going into Congress lying. And guess what? We're going to convict you of that. And we're going to put you in jail for what your criminal activities on Congress. They should be doing all of that. And, uh... Well, anyways, he came forward... And three days later, he gets contacted. I believe it's called The Intercept. And he's asked about some mental problems he had from PTSD after I think he served in Afghanistan. And when I heard that, I kind of, again, this, this, this could be contributing a little bit to the lightheadedness I've had today in the last few days. Because this pissed me off. Um, 
he uh, this is a guy who served his country he's a veteran he served honorably and he got P PTSD serving his country and what happened was uh, Jesus Christ Um, ooh, might have this one done. Um, three days after he testified, they, they, you know, suddenly they're, they're asking about this. And the initial assumption is because they contacted law enforcement because, because of what happened, the sheriff's department had a record of it and the military intelligence had a, a record, or the intelligence community at, at whole, maybe it wasn't military intelligence, they had a record of this. They contacted the sheriff's office and were told that wherever this came from, nobody asked us about it. They, it didn't come from us. And they're now saying that, well, yeah, apparently it did, but uh, that's life for Because the intercept is saying, oh, no, we did a Freedom of Information Act and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, okay, well, then why did the sheriff's department say that it didn't come from them? But even if it did, the uh, the one reporter, he looked into it. This is a guy that's lived all over because he was traveling for the military, he was traveling for the intelligence community. And uh, they knew specifically where to put this request in. They... If they had done a request for every place this guy lived, then you could maybe excuse it. This, this to me, was just lazy spycraft. Um, but if they had done that, you could maybe argue that, oh, okay, well, yeah, they just did their due diligence. They ran it to the ground. It'd be a little harder to prove. But they specifically only asked for a couple places that he lived. And so it's pretty clear somebody tipped him off. At least that's my opinion. And uh, Chris Cuomo, he's on News Nation now. He was one of the few people I actually like to watch on CNN, and then they fired him. And again, there might be more to this that I don't understand, but my understanding of it, they fired him because he helped his brother out. On his own time. You know, it's not like he didn't use his show for it. He didn't use CNN resources. He helped him out in his spare time, his own, his own stuff. And they fired him for it. And it's like that's kind of fucking. And then after he left, he he burned them, he burned them to the fucking ground. And I'm like, hey, you know that that's the way to fucking do it. That is absolutely the way to do it. Um. I don't have enough spirit. It's endless time. Investigate the sealed door. I'm gonna go kill Ada. Adria. Anyway, so that, that, that really looks like he was set up. That, and it's sleazy. And I made this comment. I go, we've always had this. Uh, right now, and again, I might be wrong. This is just my opinion. And, like, you should make up your own mind. You absolutely should on this. But there's a guy named Mick West who, who really seems like he is purposely, uh, you know, you know, he starts from a position, well, this isn't true. Now let's look for the stuff that supports my opinion, you know. 
That that's the way I think he debunks stuff. Although I will say, the last thing he debunked, I still think he might be wrong, but the last thing he debunked on uh, the proof is out there. It really looked like a reasonable debunking, which I normally don't feel when I watch some of his work product. But it really did seem like a much more reasonable. So may, maybe he's getting better. Um, you know, he he might not have a personal bent on it. He just he just might be of the belief that this is the way it is. Here we go, here we go, here we go. But, uh, oh my god, man. Um, I must wait to use that ability. That ability is not yet recharged. The power in my blood sings to me. I need to go back. Well done. You have finished. Okay, this has got like tw almost twice as much life per second, so we'll, yeah, we'll definitely do that. I must lessen my burden. adventure uh, I'm gonna go up to torment and see what happens but so that's what they're doing they're there it looks it really looks like they're outing him and I I find it disgusting but again because there there was an old documentary watch it looked like it was made in the 70s or the 80s and they were showing like uh, they don't really have these anymore. They were like that. They, they were what was called a talk show, and I think it was a local one. But they they had a guy that was nationwide. My mom watched, and that's how. That's the only reason I know who he is. But his name was Donahue, and he actually was pretty good. And what he did is he'd have the audience, and sometimes he'd be sitting down. A lot of times he'd be walking around. He'd be asking questions. He'd go out and hand the mic to somebody in the audience. The audience would give us like one of the first ones they did like that back then. He went nationwide. And uh, this looked like one of those where, you know, you had you had him, you had his panel, and then they would take questions. Well, there was a guy there in the audience who stood up, and he was a UFO researcher. And the guy on stage who I believe in some way, shape, or form was connected to the government. I don't know if he was a former military or intelligence, but I'm pretty sure it was it was known, that, and maybe I'm wrong, but it seemed to me he was known to be connected to the government. And he could not fault this guy for the facts he was bringing. Couldn't argue with it. So he starts attacking him for his criminal record. Well, okay, well... His, you know, I don't care how many DUIs he had. 
I don't care how many fights he got in. Now, if you can show that he's like a corrupt con man, somebody not to be believed, but if you know he's just a regular criminal, no history of defrauding people or what, well, it's not relevant. And that's what they do. And this one here, they're they're outing him in the, that Chris Cuomo. He made the comment. He goes, you know, if his medical record showed that he had broken a leg or if his medical record had shown that he had been in a car accident. He goes, would they have would they have asked him about that or were they only asking about stuff that they were hoping was going to discredit him? And that's what Ross Coulthard said. He goes, yeah, I seriously doubt if they'd have brought it up. And he said, he goes, and the thing is, all of this happened before he worked for the intelligence community. He, uh, he, he briefly was treated for PTSD. He got help. He got over it. He was able to pass a fairly extensive intelligence uh, certification and get some of the highest level of classification we have in this country. So clearly the government did not have a problem with it. And then uh, Chris Cuomo brought on a, uh, a member of the House, Republican, and he goes, hey, with this latest development of uh, him, do you have any, or he goes, do you have any reservations about him? Do you find him any less credible? And that timber, you know, got, you know, I hate to say it, but at least on this issue, this is a Republican I like. And he goes, no, he goes, 100% no. He goes, I find him just as credible today as I did three days ago. But he said, you know, even if we didn't, we got two other witnesses that, that were there, eyewitnesses, in some cases more of an eyewitness than he was because he talked to people. But he said, this is just, he goes, this to me looks like they are smearing a veteran to try and cover this up. And he goes, it is just wrong. And he goes, I got to tell you, I'm not the only one, but he goes, we are mad as hell about this. And I'm glad to hear it. I, I really am glad to hear it. They should get to the bottom of it. Now, what I'm going to do is uh, I got my uh, thing from him. I'm going to go ahead and switch over to Minecraft. And when I come back, I will do my level best to talk about the UFO files that I'm watching. I'm going to watch that other video while I'm off. Thank you for checking this out. I am getting more response on my Minecraft videos, and it's not much. But I'm getting more response on my Minecraft videos, so I'm, I'm going to definitely focus a little more on those. Peace out. I'm still going to make these at least until the season is over. When the Diablo season is over, I am probably going to start doing... Uh, oh, shit. The uh, Grand Theft Auto or Call of Duty until the new season starts up. Peace out, and I hope everybody is having a